All right, guys, I'm going to talk about different ways to cut up vocal parts, um, create some of those stuttering effects, and just different vocal cutting options. I'll also get into a little bit about, you know, making lead parts from, uh, from pad sounds and things like that. You can cut up a pad a similar way that you'd cut up a vocal. So let's start with just a, a little loop that I've got here. Hang tight just a sec, let me make sure the volume's up. Okay, and bonus points for anyone that recognizes that off the bat. So the first approach that you can take to cutting out vocals is just simply lay it in your arrange window and cut out the, the pieces that you don't want until you make a rhythm. like so, and that, that'll make a stutter sound. And you could um, go to different resolutions here to, or even triplets, which is kind of fun. So I'll knock out a couple of those and then jump back into 30 second notes. Totally random, but there's a cut of vocal. And the difference between that and just taking apart and duplicating it is it's got this kind of continuum to it, which kind of has that a better effect for probably the, the stutter effect that you're going for is using one long sample and, and cutting into it. So that's one approach. The second approach that you can take you can do it in the arrange window or in the uh, in the session window. We'll just do it here. Is you can use the auto pan, and what you do is you set the auto pan to mono, which instead of having it click there, just click down here, and that'll put it in mono. And then you're going to set the rate uh, to work with the tempo of your track. You're not going to have this option. Well, actually. Yeah, if you click here, as you can see, it goes back into stereo. So to go mono, you have to manually set your rate. But you can figure out what rates match certain BPMs and just use that. And I like to use uh, saw wave. And then I kind of back the shape off a little bit. This can go all the way to a square if you go full, or you can back it off. And you can kind of move between this and create some interesting things. It's not going to do triplets and things like that unless you want to just play with the rate while you're recording, which you can easily do just by making a resample track, set it to resampling, record, and then play around with it a bit and then cut out the parts that you like, which works great. So I'll go ahead and uh, play this effect here. <laughs> So that'll cut it up in different ways. And, you know, if I want, the thing is, it's kind of tricky to sync the rate with the tempo. So to move this, what I would probably want to do is set it to a, um, a MIDI controller and then set the lowest to one rate and then the highest to double that. That way you can easily kind of jump between those two. You could also set up a beat repeat on top of the auto pan and ju just to throw in uh, little random notes and things like that or different variations. Once again, this is better to just kind of record the results and cut out the good bits because you're going to get a lot of crap when you do that as well. The next approach that you can take is you could go in to your actual properties, go into your envelopes, and let's say you have a, a part that's like three minutes long or whatever. You don't want to be editing every little part but you do want a certain type of stutter effect to go on. So you can make like uh, anywhere from a one bar to a 16 bar little effect by hitting unlinked automation. So you would just go into your properties here and click unlinked. It's normally 
at length with your volume. Hit volume first and then hit unlinked. And then set the length to which you want the automation. And so I'm going to go ahead and let's just start this on. Oh. Set that to one. And we'll just set the length to one bar. But you can set it to whatever you want. So if this is a three minute long vocal part, it'll just keep replaying this, this automation loop while it's, it's rolling through the whole track. So that's kind of cool. So basically you just, uh, you know, you set your automation here. And you could actually draw in some interesting automation as well. So these are 30 second notes, I'll just um, You want to make sure the volume's all the way down and all the way up, really, to get the effect. And then you could come in and, um, you know, fine-tune certain things. Like, I might want to round that out a little bit. Create a different shape. And I could actually highlight this and duplicate it any pl any place that I want. I'll copy that and I can paste it over here and so forth. So you can do a lot of interesting things and then when you play the part, I'll make sure that the auto pans off, which it is great. And then when I play the part, you'll hear this automation. <laughs> Okay, so that's another way that you can cut up your parts. Another approach is by using a gate. And the trick is I've just made a, um, I just made an operator pattern just with a little click sound. I'll show you here. Just with the pattern that I want. So... Just this little click. Now this is going to trigger the gate on the vocals. It also works really well with strings because with strings, well, with any part that you're cutting up, there's a chance that you're going to lose a little bit of bite to the beginning of each uh, cut. So adding a little, you know, a little click, like so, can give the sound a little bit more punch and bite. So what I'll do is I'll pop a gate in to the track that I want to have the effect on. So let's go ahead and turn this gate on. And then I'm side chaining it to this gate trigger. As you can see, it's audio is coming from the gate trigger. Set the attack pretty pretty fast, hold for just, you know, whatever the appropriate amount of time is, and then when I play this part, which is a really cool effect, and notice the difference between with and without the click. You might not like it, you know, with the vocal, but I'll show you with a, a string sound as well. So in a mix, that's going to help things uh, kind of cut through the mix a lot more. So I did the same thing. I just uh, have basic strings playing here. Nothing special. Here, let me turn that off as well. Really bland. 
nothing special. In fact, it's not a very good sound. It's just an example here. And I do the same thing. I've got a gate being triggered by this little part here that I made. And this is just an operator instrument, by the way, that just has a, a very quick envelope. So it's got almost no decay at all. So it just has a little click part. So I just used a little noise wave and a saw wave to make that sound. But there's a lot of different ways that you can make little click sounds. And then when I play this part with the gate trigger, So that creates an interesting sound. And, and once again, notice the difference between having the, the clicks on and off. You don't need them on to trigger it, but it, adding a little click can, can add a little bit of bite and help things sound better or more clear in your mix. Anyway, that type of approach is actually used in Sasha's expander track. And that's pretty much the trick. That's the way that it's done. It's just a nice pad sound and then a, a gate trigger. I'll give you one more approach uh, that you can take to cutting up vocals. And that is by right-clicking on your part. Now, let me turn off the gate so that you're just hearing the effect of this. Go ahead and right click and slice to new MIDI track. And since it's a vocal part, I'm not going to go by transients. I'm going to go by 16th note. And I'll go ahead and slice that up. And it'll make a little MIDI part right there for you. So I'll just solo this real quick. Okay, so it, it cut that into a bunch of different parts. But now what I can do is I can lower the sustain and the decay and create that interesting chopped effect as well in this track. And actually, this effect give, gives you a lot of different parameters to mess with to create some interesting type of results. So this is kind of a fun thing to experiment with as well. Anyway, and of course you could also play or create your own MIDI clip playing these little slices whichever way you want to create, you know, anything that interests you. I'm just randomly making something here and we'll do some triplets. Okay, and this part here is just a little cut up deal. But that has a different effect because you're not taking a continuous part. This is just kind of re-editing and cutting up and playing back the part. But still you can get some really interesting results. So those are some examples of ways that you can cut up vocals. So I hope this gives you a lot to work with. Enjoy.